Yeah, so all the splashing I was doing was good. For some reason, there were a bunch of little flies on the water. I mean, I normally don't have the issue, but I found. There we go. And I. Mike covered with some water. I found the splashes in skimming the top of the water really helped to <laughs> move those flies away. So, oh, look at that. I want my house on a river like that when I'm older. So freaking beautiful. Anyways, day 31 and <laughs> it's just nice to get out and really get out of my head and stop thinking for a little bit because I spent the whole morning studying for my heat transfer exam. And I'm gonna spend tomorrow also studying for the same exam because it's tomorrow night. So, just really enjoy this routine because if it wasn't for it I probably would have spent the whole day in my apartment studying then I would have driven to my classes spent the time in class and then driven back to my apartment and spent the day studying which is <laughs> not the best for mental happiness. I mean, that honestly might be why I was pretty down a month ago. Just the monotony of the routine, stuck inside, not really going out into nature and connecting with it, but rather spending my time with textbooks and re-watching lectures. And just no way to spend your life. Which is why I really don't wanna... Okay, I'm gonna that. It's no way to spend your life, which is why I'm not gonna spend mine stuck in a cubicle. Man, I can't, just cities in general, you lose the connection to the nature, and I just wouldn't be able to function with all the hustle and bustle. the nature in. I mean, I need just with all that stuff going on, I'd find it difficult to think. And I mean, like, if you live down in LA or something, that is LA, San Francisco, some of the California cities where the suburbs themselves like sprawl outwards for so long and so far due to the price of housing and then the city centers are so populated that going out into nature 
isn't really going out into nature because you got like 15 other people there also trying to go out into nature and you can't ever just really be alone. And for me, that would be very unpleasant. And that's why <laughs> when I say I uh, merge submerge myself in the coldest water that I have access to, I mean, Sometimes it's the river, sometimes it's a lake or something, but it has access to little asterisk and can also be alone. Because I just prefer, I prefer to interact with nature in that capacity or with one of the, the people I enjoy spending time with and nature, but I don't really enjoy spending time with strangers in nature. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even Saturday when we had the fisherman we had one that was behind me, but there's another one that I saw downstream that was eyeing me the whole time, and I was just like, yeah, what, um, taking a cold plunge, what's up, man? And he's looking at me, I'm like, I would enjoy this more if he wasn't there. Cold water helps with bringing you out of your head and into your body so that you don't wind up fixating on that thought, but it is still something that is in the back of my mind is like, I would find this more enjoyable if he wasn't there too. And that's why I want a big piece of land out in like Montana or someplace wild, cold, and in the middle of nowhere where I don't have to interact with anyone I wanna. No one's gonna be in need no one's gonna be on my property. I don't need to go out to any parks or anything because my property is gonna be so big that I can just walk it. I mean not seeing another person and having nature to myself it was really enjoyable for me <laughs> I mean that's not to say I don't like to interact with people but when I go out into nature I'm going to get away from it all and when I'm trying to interact with people I'll go somewhere else where I want to interact with them there's very seldom the occasion where I go out into nature or I go someplace in nature to interact with people I mean the one kind of situation that I can think of that might apply to that would be the White Mountains and staying in the lodges where it's like I go there and I interact with people at the lodge and I play the board games with them and we talk and have conversations but I'm not going there to interact with them I'm more going there to sleep and then because of how long I'm there I also am gonna want to interact with people, so I talk to them, 
but it's not me necessarily going out into nature for the purpose of talking to people. I don't think I really ever do that. I don't think I ever go out with the... I never head out into nature with the specific purpose of starting a conversation with a stranger. And that's not to say that I wouldn't be open to or would be opposed to having a conversation with someone or even starting it myself. It's just that I don't go out there with the specific intent of doing it. Okay. Yeah. So, day 31. I'm going to do a quick sign out in case my GoPro batter dies from the heat. And then I can keep talking for a little. So, one thing that crossed my mind while I was in bed last night was it's so much easier to fall asleep and to make sure that you don't have insomnia if you don't if you lie in bed without the intention of not without, if you lie in bed without the specific goal of falling asleep and instead bring yourself into the moment by enjoying the relaxed feeling you have and noticing how comfy it is and how warm it is and like the feeling of your sheets on your skin and then relax into that feeling and you'll fall asleep but if you go to bed wanting to fall asleep then the fact that you're not already asleep and that how hot is this? It's like warm. And that connection to the outcome will negatively affect your ability to fall asleep. And then I was like, oh, well that's a good case for why people should be detached from the outcome. But then I saw a uh, Valuetainment, I think that's the name of his channel, uh, video talking about how his son told him that he was going to be the greatest boxer of all time. And then the next day his son said that he wanted to be the greatest boxer of all time. And if he used the word wanted versus was, then it protected him from failure because he if you say you want to be something, then that's one thing. Because you can always want to do something. But if you say you are going to be something and you're not that, then you, you have failed in the task. So I was wondering, where is the connection between saying, I want to be the greatest or I want to fall asleep? and setting that as a goal. I mean, for me, starting with BJJ, I want to be a black belt. I want to win tournaments. I want not necessarily to be the best of all time because I have other aspirations, but I want to be the best that I can and I want to be... I mean, is that it, though? Saying that I want to be the best that I can? Because that seems like... That seems like a lower goal versus when people say... Shoot for the star. Shoot for the moon. And even if you miss, you'll be among the stars. Will you still be happy being among the stars? Or are you gonna be are you gonna be disappointed and annoyed with being among the stars because you were attached to the outcome of shooting for the moon 
or do you necessarily need to attach yourself to the outcome? Can you have a goal without attaching yourself to the outcome? And I, if you put value in said goal, then that value attaches you to it. So how does that work? How can you value a goal without attaching yourself to it so that if you don't, if you fail to accomplish it, but you still wind up accomplishing something incredible along the way, how are you happy with where you are versus where you want it to be? And that's really the question I'm contemplating is you have the saying like put your goals way up high shoot for the moon and everything and then it's enjoy the process and detach yourself from the outcome and I'm just like trying to find how those two things can correspond to being successful in the desired area of interest because I want to put my effort in and try really hard but I also want to not necessarily be fixated on the outcome so that I can enjoy the moment and enjoy the training that I put into it and not get so caught up in the end goal like right now I don't have an end goal for BJJ I just want to get better at it so that in itself doesn't necessarily make me attached to the outcome and I am enjoying the intermediate time but I'm wondering do you even need to is it actually necessary to value such high goals could you just value the enjoyment you could you just enjoy the process of doing it because you have could you enjoy the process of doing it and in only doing that get good enough well then there's what is good enough could you then become one of the best if you only put um, your value in the enjoyment of it or do you need to set such high goals for yourself because now I'm trying to start looking at the individual assumptions I made before and seeing which one of those aren't valid because they can't both my my previous assumptions cannot be valid because the two outcomes do not equal each other. And those two outcomes are the, it's like the saying, the journey is the destination, where if you put value in the destination itself, then you lose the ability to value the journey because the journey is just a means to an end but if you put value in the journey then you can enjoy the process but you don't necessarily put as much emphasis on meeting that end destination because if you had a good road trip and you're like well the, the journey is the destination but you want to go to like Niagara Falls. If you stop in New York City or New York and you find this awesome camps that you want to go to and you're like, yep, I want to go here, this is cool. I mean, I guess that's just the difference of not taking into account time and how your values change. Because if a younger version of myself said the end goal is going to Niagara Falls but in the moment I'm more than satisfied just to stay where I'm at in a campsite in New York I mean that is
always detaching yourself from the outcome because you negate it for something you find more pleasurable. I guess it really comes down to... You need to know whether or not you're settling and... I mean, I'm still struggling with it because I, I want to push myself to be the best at the sport and to really do well, but I want to enjoy it because when you push yourself to be the best, you do well, and then you find yourself at the top. I mean, yeah, it's nice, but you don't really enjoy it because you're pushing yourself so hard. And you're solely focused on the outcome and not the enjoyment you can get from doing it. So is the conundrum of life. I really asked my brother about it and do an update to this. So, actual sign out, day 32, 31.